It's Brian Preston, the money guy. Um, this next one's from Taylor Lewis. Taylor says, can you move money in and out of a donor advised fund or does it have to stay there until you donate it? Also, are there low minimum contribution funds available? So it's first, first we're to talk about what is a donor advised fund, just really quickly. Yeah. And can I put money in and pull money out? And then when I put money in, are there things I can do with that money? And then do I have to have a lot of money to be able to do it? Those well, are all the questions yeah, I Yeah, so donor-advised funds, here's what I like about them is that they do give you tons of flexibility, but I do want to make sure I'm very clear on one key component of that question. It is a one-way street. Yep. It is entry only. There's no exit, meaning because recognize you give the you give the, the charitable gift fund your appreciated holding. You get immediately a tax deduction for the full fair market value of that holding, and it, since it's appreciated, you never had to pay income taxes on all the gains you had there. So it's a really cool situation, the fact that you have an appreciated holding that allows you to fulfill a lot of your charitable goals. You never had to pay income tax. But by the sheer fact they're giving you this charitable deduction means it ain't coming back to you. You've sure. actually given up control of those assets. Now, here's what I do like. There are some slight strings is that the, the charitable advised funds – do while you say, hey, look, we're going to recognize that you gave us this money. It's a one-way street. It comes in. It can't go elsewhere. But we do allow you to fulfill your charitable intentions and that we will let you designate who, where the money goes to. And by the way, we also let you know when you get to designate it. Because I do like that, like, um, if, like I use Fidelity, charitable sure. gift fund. Um, I put my money into the moderate allocation mm-hmm. because I know I'm turning that money around over a few months sure. usually. So I don't there's no reason to go put it in the stock fund because it's it's getting cleared out through time as I'm funding mm-hmm. and then investing and then also giving to the charities very quickly. Yep. Um so that that all kind of plays into it, but um kind of lost my train of thought yeah, after no, and, the, and the only other thing I'd say is one of the things that I love about charitable gift funds, and this is something that's changed over the years, is it doesn't require large sums of money to be able to take advantage okay. of it. If you are someone uh, what I love is it. It doesn't. I, I can't remember the number. Five thousand is popping into my mind. It's, it's actually lower than that. Now. Is it lower than that now? Yeah, they've gone down to. A, I, I, I was gonna say it was around two thousand. Around two thousand. Great. So, it, to open the account, but what's even better is in terms of what you can send out. So you could open an account for two thousand. I think you can make grants as low as like fifty to a hundred bucks. Yeah. I, I can't remember the exact They're number. Super low. But it's super low. So you you don't have to be a Rockefeller to take advantage of one of these funds. And they can be a huge planning opportunity for the everyday giver, the everyday person that wants to be charitably inclined, but wants to do so in a very, very tax efficient manner. I, I do want to give one point of clarification on this, because this, this has come up recently where I had the question, we've had so much volatility in the last year because of the pandemic. Mm-hmm. And then everybody, I'm, I'm worried half of you have had some GameStop that you made 60% <laughs> off of or something like that. Anything that goes in a charitable gift fund does need to be long term oh, in nature, point. though. A lot that's of people fail to recognize this need to be needs to be money that you've held for over twelve months to put it in there. That's how you're going to maximize that tax benefit, because if you give something less than twelve months, you don't get all the win win situation. Yeah, what you actually get is you get a deduction equal to your basis in that holding. Exactly. So think think about this. Let's use GameStop for example, or let's use Tesla because that's I, don't, I like that one better. Let's say that you put $5,000 into Tesla stock and now it's worth $20,000. you are like, you know what? Awesome. I'm going to go give that money away. If it was short term and you gift that Tesla to the uh, donor advised fund, remember, it is irrevocable. It is one way. It's gone when you do that. If it's short term, your charitable deduction was not $20,000. It was five thousand. Yeah. So you just want to make sure that you understand exactly what you're doing there. But uh, we love them. I mean, because I think if you have appreciated holdings, you're charitably inclined. It doesn't boast that it doesn't take a ton um, to to set this account up, and then they will respect a lot of your mm-hmm. charitable goals. I use this all the time now, um, and I encourage it to anybody who is charitably minded. 